Don't forget to check out the new shirts on our website celebrating our 300th episode of All About. Hey everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About. Today we're going to be going over my top 10 picks for angelfish in your saltwater tank. This order is based on my experience with the fish, their personality, their looks, and just my overall liking of the fish over the years. In a typical angelfish tank, you'll want to have plenty of live rock for grazing, caves for them to hide in, and overhangs for them to explore. Angelfish pick at rocks constantly for algae, but you'll also want to get some dry seaweed for them to eat on as well. Algae will keep up their colors, health, and overall well-being in the aquarium. Some angelfish can be in tanks together, but others will definitely be kings and queens of the tank, becoming very territorial over the area. Angelfish can be bad about nipping on stony, soft corals, and clam mantles, but some people get lucky with them and will have them in complete reef tanks with every coral you can imagine with no issues at all. Now enough of that, let's get right into my top 10. At number 10, we have the Queen Angelfish. What an absolute gem to look at in the aquarium. Juveniles start with a variation of blue colored stripes with a little bit of yellow on their belly, but as they mature and reach adulthood, you end up with this vibrant, almost gold covered body with blue accents left from when they were young. Just a gorgeous angelfish to have in the aquarium. This is one of the largest angelfish in today's episode, easily growing over a foot and a half long by adulthood. Would recommend having at least a 250 gallon aquarium or larger to house one of these. They typically will cost you $250 to $300, sometimes even more than that, just to get one of these angels. They need a lot of open space for swimming, but also they enjoy big caves and overarches for them to swim through and hide while also grazing on that live rock. This can be a very tricky angelfish to keep because they can be very fragile to your water levels, as well as being one picky eater. Make sure to have a seasoned aquarium with plenty of algae for them to graze on. Also, be supplementing their diet with dry seaweed as well as meaty things like mysis, spirulina, or brine shrimp. You can even put some coral in the tank for them to eat if they are ignoring everything else. That's something natural they'd be able to go after in the wild. At number 9, we have the Bicolor Angelfish. Everyone loved these at our shop. They were a huge seller half yellow and half deep blue, it almost looks fake. Typically costing about $60 to get one and requiring a 55 gallon or larger. It's a go-to angelfish, especially for beginners. They're very hardy, they're quick to eat, plus they do well with practically any tank mate. Still be careful as they are known to pick at corals, however would do fantastic in a fowler tank. I wouldn't pair these up with another bicolor, but you can mix them with other angels. They tend to do just fine. At number eight, we have the Lemon Peel Angelfish. If you've been looking for some yellow in the tank, look no further. Bright as the sun with a blue ring around their eye, it is sure to catch anyone walking by the tank. Lemons usually cost around $50 to get one, and I'd recommend a 55 gallon or larger. They aren't a pygmy angel, but they also don't get as big as some of the angels like the Korans or Emperors. A lemon peel is gonna get about five inches by adulthood, I've always had really good luck with the lemon peel. They were always hardy and quick to eat in the tank setting. Just an overall trustworthy fish to have in the tank. They can be territorial, but never to the extent that you might have to take them out. They do well with tangs, other species of angels, and even smaller fish like gobies and wrasse. At number seven, we have the Flameback Angelfish. A really great pygmy angel to get that has coloration that really pops. Only grow into three inches in the tank setting, these fish do not require a huge aquarium to live in. I'd recommend at least a 30 gallon tank. They are an explorer, so build them a nice maze of live rock to travel through and graze on when they're hungry. They can go to just about any other smaller reef fish like clowns, gobies, cardinals, and more. All of them will do just fine together. With pygmy angels, some people will get the idea to have multiple in a tank, but please be careful because unless they're a mated pair, they will most likely fight constantly until one perishes. At number six, we have the cherub angelfish. 
I love these little guys. A true pygmy angelfish right here, very popular one. Again, only getting about three inches in length by adulthood. This one can be housed in a wide variety of size tanks. I've seen them do really well in those smaller seasoned reef tanks that are only 30 gallons. And on the flip side, I've seen them thrive in 120 fowler tanks. A cherub is a much shyer fish in the aquarium, not much of an open swimmer. They usually are hanging close to the rock structure, swimming in and out of the live rock. So build them some cool caves and crevices to go through. Also make sure to have a wide variety of food on hand as these guys can be picky when first introduced. Flakes, pellets, frozen food, and algae are all a must to try and see which one they prefer. At number five, we have the Majestic Angelfish. These have some magnificent colors on them. Royal blues and yellows, almost golds in some light. Polka dots all over. Light blue highlights around the fins. It's sure to pop in any tank. This is a larger angelfish getting about a foot in length and costing $100 to $200. I'd recommend at least a 180 to house the Majestic. Not as active of a swimmer, but will need plenty of room to swim out in the open as well as large caves for them to hide in. As a juvenile, they have almost no yellow on them, just blacks and blues, but as they mature, they will show more and more yellow towards the middle of their body. A majestic angel is semi-aggressive, so they can still become the kings and queens of the tank. However, with their shy personality, we've seen good results mixing them with just about any fish you'd find in a fowler or reef tank. At number four, we have the Coral Beauty Angelfish. One of the most common angelfish I see in tanks alongside the Flame Angel. With the Coral Beauties, you get a very hardy angel that is quick to adapt to the tank setting. Eating fast and grazing on live rocks to keep the free of hair algae, Coral Beauties also do not get too aggressive in the tank like other angels might. So it makes a very easy to mix other fish like clowns, wrasse, tangs, or even other angels together. Usually costing about $60 to get one, I'd recommend at least a 55 gallon to house one of these. They do not get too large, only growing about 4 inches in length. So you do not have to worry about upgrading the tank to something bigger in the future. Diet should consist of dry seaweed, spirulina, mysis, and or brine shrimp. These will keep their colors bright, health up, and overall aggression low. Always try to tell people a fish that's full is a much less aggressive fish. Plus, the color on them are really cool. You end up with a very deep, almost black body around the edges, but right in the middle, it looks like there's a little fire going on. Hitting on our top three. So at number three, we have the Flame Angelfish. This is such a loyal angelfish to get, and one of the best sellers when I worked at the shop. Their colors are eye-popping. That blazing red looks like a little fireball shooting through the tank. I never realized how expensive they've gotten in recent days. I couldn't find one online below $90. I know the Hawaii bands usually add to that price. Flames can sometimes be considered a pygmy angelfish because they only get to about 4 inches by adulthood. This is one angelfish that a lot of people risk putting in their reef, and at times they end up not messing with anything, and they look beautiful in the reefs too, which is great. But on the total flip side, I've heard horror stories about people having to bring them back because they were picking at all their corals and clam mantles. Flames can have an aggressive side to them, but they usually go with any other fish, small or large. You'll want plenty of caves and structure for them to hide in and also explore for algae throughout the day. I usually would recommend a 55 gallon to house this angelfish. Gives them plenty of room to grow and explore. At number two, we have the Koran Angelfish. This one and number one were so hard to pick between because I've had such good experiences with both of them. They both also are very long living angels to have. Some we saw being 15 plus years old in the tank setting. They really become the cats and dogs of the house. The Koran Angel gets very large. Growing over a foot long, they'll require at least a 200 plus gallon tank to enjoy their time and have plenty of room to grow. These are very active swimmers, which means they need plenty to eat as they're beaming through the rocks. Algae is a must, but it is also great to have some meaty foods like mysis and brine shrimp to feed them too. A cram will typically cost you about $150 to get one. As juveniles, they have these royal blue stripes with black and white stripes alternating, but as they get older, they get a little more dull. Stripes turn to polka dots and the midsection of their body begins to gray out. 
still looks really cool because you end up with this huge fish in the tank. You can pretty much pair them up with anybody. I noticed a lot taking care of so many Korans coming from shipment is they were also so bad about having ick or cauliflower. We were always having to place them in copper tanks or feeding them medicine like Metroplex, Canoplex, which is a powder you could mix in their food. So be careful whenever you first get one on ship it. Might have to do a little quarantining. At number one, we have the Emperor Angelfish. One of the most sought out emperors, not just in the hobby, but also whenever people are diving, they always recognize these fish. They roam the tanks as if they really are the emperor of the area, a very open swimmer that eats like a hog. We'd be putting four things of algae in the tank a day, and he would have it cleaned off by five every single day. Emperors are known for their coloration, which is almost like a Koran as a juvenile, but turns into something even more beautiful as an adult. You have yellows, blues, black, and white striped down them. It is sure to catch anyone's eye. Emperors can slightly change in coloration depending on where they come from, some from Indonesia, others from Sri Lanka, and even the Philippines. Prices tend to stay around $180 to get one. By adulthood, they can get up to a foot or more, usually about a foot and a few inches. I'd recommend, again, 200 or more gallons to take care of these fish. Mixing other angels with the emperor is best if you can do it at the same time. Their personalities can be really territorial once in the tank for a while, so it can be very hard to add something in later. Larger tank mates are usually best, like tangs, big wrasse, groupers, and even large starfish too. So if you're looking for a fish that's going to get big and you have a large seasoned saltwater tank, this is a really, really good pick. That's going to conclude today's episode of All About. Thank you all for tuning in. If there's another angelfish that did not make the list that you just absolutely love, please leave it down in the comments for others to check out that one as it might end up being the one they choose to add to their own tank. Don't forget, we're also celebrating our 300th episode of All About with new t-shirts on the website. Go check them out, designed and made by myself. I can't thank y'all enough for all your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you haven't already, I will see y'all later. Again, if you have any other questions, if you want to know more about the compatibility on which angels you should get, or just have some more specific questions that I didn't hit on, please leave it down in the comments or reach out to me on social media. Thank y'all.